Good evening and welcome back to another video on Minecraft.Travail. If you see this video on another YouTube channel, then just know it's also part of the same thing. So today we're going to be exploring a new station, which is on a red line extension. So this is the extension of the red line. So the name of this station has not yet been determined, but further this way on the tracks, it leads to Edensville up that hill right there. And this way out of this station, it goes straight to High Street, Kensington. So around here is a fairly new area. We have been doing a few developments as far as our communications technology and railroad technology. So this area here is a swampland. That's why the tracks don't exactly, um, we didn't use gravel, we just built concrete tracks. There are certain areas where this has to be done though. So if you look at the route on the red line extension, you'll see that it goes onto I-90. And we're going to talk a little bit about I-90. So I-90 is a interstate highway. It runs through the entire city going in a north south direction. It does in fact go all the way to Eisenhower Airport. It also crosses on top of I-35, which runs east to west from Richmond, cuts through Alex World, and then goes pretty much into Cheshire County and beyond. So we're gonna go ahead and skip ahead. It's a beautiful scenery with this highway. It crosses through many different interesting biomes, plains, and one thing that you might basically find odd about this particular track is that it does in fact run in the median of the highway. This is what you would consider to be a rural highway. So that's the main reason why the railroad is able to fit so neatly in here. So as you see, we have a standard regulation turnout. So the train goes up and flies over and then it slowly goes down. And right now we're approaching the stretch into High Street Kensington. There has been some plans to put another station here, but we're not too sure about that due to the fact that it would be in very close proximity to the High Street Kensington station, as well as the Hezekiah Spring station, which is under construction right there. That is one of the many proposed names for that station. It has not yet been chosen, but the most popular name as of right now is Hezekiah Springs. So you see these two, the two rails between here and here, they're two different rolling stock. So rolling stock, the new rolling stock runs on integrated rail, which requires a powered rail followed by a light and the trains doesn't require so much expensive powered rail. While the older rolling stock needs to have a continuous supply of powered rails in order to gain enough traction to continue their speed. So right now we are in what is the High Street Kensington Station. So it's a pretty interesting and clean design. What you would be able to do once you're here, the train lets you off and you could go and ride the brown train. One thing that is interesting about the new map of our transit is basically the fact that the purple and the red now connects to the brown on the northern half of the 
system which is something that was never previously done if you wanted to go north what you would have to do is to say go to cosmos church station transfer and uh, then head north to what is now known as either Edensville or Rosenthal. The line never used to go all the way to Rosenthal, however, it used to terminate at Preston Hills. Uh, then, it was then extended to Rosenthal to allow better connectivity to the Brown Line. The northern part of the Brown Line mainly consists of many villages. It travels over plains, grasslands, farms, and a lot of agricultural infrastructure. What you can see below is an abandoned village. It was abandoned after a few pillagers raided it a couple weeks ago. Wow. So here we are approaching the Benterville station. This is the new model of stations that you will see on the Brown train. And the thing about these stations that's wonderful is they are very basically easy to replicate. They have one blueprint. So if you pass here, you will see Hamilton Yard. So Hamilton Yard is a train maintenance facility Trains are cleaned in the train wash right here. They're stored in order to be fixed, and then trains are fixed in this barn here. So this is not a train storage facility. This is basically a mechanics shop for trains. As we fly over mountains here, we'll start getting even further into the more northern reaches of the system. So right here you can see Blairsville Station. Blairsville Station is truly one of a kind because it is one of the oldest but at the same time newest stations in the network. There used to be a area here that was larger called Blairsville and many long time ago it actually used to serve as a national rail station. This is the old national rail viaduct seeing how it looks very different from the KRTA viaducts. So what you could see here joining us right now is the purple train. So for persons who want to take the purple train, what they would need to do is stay on the brown train until they've arrived at Rosenthal Station. Then they can easily transfer to the purple train going back to Preston Hills and down the purple line until Eisenhower Airport. So here is something truly one of a kind. It is the only two times where a railroad will run right next to each other on two separate viaducts. Both of these viaducts lead into Rosenthal with the one on the right being the brown and the one on the left being the purple. So we will take a tour of Rosenthal station. And one thing that should be looked at is the map. This map has not been updated to reflect the extension to Rosenthal and the extension to High Street. But once it is updated, then what would most likely happen is you would have a more accurate depiction of the service. So this is the Brown Trade platform. Now let's take a look at the Red. So when red trains pull into the station, the purple, we left red behind at um, 
we left red behind that this platform is clearly not open but we left red behind that um, high street Kensington so here are the tracks that comes after the station into a small wooded area and these are the end of the line for the purple most of the time anytime it snows trains will often arrive into the station completely covered in snow due to the fact that it is leaving the very mountainous and snowy region of Rosenthal yes Rosenthal station is not exactly in the Rosenthal region it is located just outside of it Rosenthal is in fact a large city being it contains municipalities such as Preston Hills which is also where the infamous Preston Hills Mall is Preston Hills Mall is an upscale shopping center that is very known for its recent violent history here we are passing through marshlands and we're going to cross over the Spring Hill Aquifer, yes. So this is where most of the water for the city of Melchizedek flows through. Here we are at Stamulus Island Station. This area here is pretty much an island seeing that it is surrounded by the aquifer. One question that might be common is why are the train tracks on stilts? Train tracks are normally placed on stilts anytime they are in water. And this is a very watery region. This is in fact a very large aquifer. So it stretches up to a mile wide and is a half mile long. Preservation of this aquifer is extremely important seeing that the majority of the city of Melchizedek get its water from here. As we continue going up north, and I've decided to speed up or else we could be here all day. As we continue to go up north, we are going to start seeing some pretty interesting things. So there's a few stations that should be looked at. The name of this particular station is called Poinsetti Hills. And one of fun facts about Poinsetti Hill Station is that that is one of the safest stations in the entire KRTA network. The next one, which is Bradford, also has a similar reputation, seeing as it is, it is the least used station in the network. So as we see, train tracks tend to be on viaducts in this particular area because the area is so dense and unstable. It is just safer to use viaducts. This is a storage yard for all work trains. So the KRTA has several work trains that performs maintenance operations on the KRTA network. So that includes carrying mail, carrying rubbish, and many different things that the KRTA does that doesn't involve passengers. The next station we'll take a look at is another interesting one, 
this time for its name, and it's called Matimus Rome. So Matimus Rome Station is a pretty interesting place because Matimus Rome is one of the best stations in the network for connectivity and parking. Yes. So basically, I just said that Matimus Rome Station has the best parking lot to platform time in the entire network. So here we are back on I-90 to go to the next station from here. Here is one of the most dangerous stations in the entire KRTA network. Many people get scared when they hear Van Buren Station. It is the most dangerous station in the entire network. So dangerous that police officers that staff the station 24 seven must receive hazard pay. This is also the only station in the network where police can be called by pushing a red button on demand. Truly a dangerous place. 90% of the time, this station is never open at night. The area around the station is extremely violent also. With a high rate of property crime, an extreme rate of violent assaults, attacks, and even homicides. The next station from here, which is Sincereville, is slightly better, but not altogether though. With its close proximity to Van Buren, a lot of crime tends to spill over into this station. However, it is nowhere near as bad as Sincereville. As we approach the end of the line on our speculation over the brown and the red line extensions, you will start to see the train tracks dive into multiple different biomes as it heads on its final stretch to Eisenhower Station. Eisenhower Station is the northernmost point on the KRTA network. It is also one of the busiest. All bus routes that come from rural areas will stop at Eisenhower Station. There is also a large park and ride lot holding approximately 1,600 parking spaces at this station. This station has the ability to accommodate up to nine buses at a single time with drop-off lanes on the opposite side of the station for Lyft, Uber, taxis, and Go buses. This bus also serves Greyhound. Seeing that this is the northernmost point on the entire system, it only makes sense that a lot of communications activity goes on here. It is one of the few stations in the KRTA network where the elevator is actually working. Yes, KRTA's elevators are normally 
not working. This problem is being looked at and worked on though as ADA, the federal ADA Act requires that all public transit stations have a working elevator or a way to circumvent the use of elevators. So if an elevator isn't working at one station, then a minibus would have to pick up the passengers from another station and carry them to the station with the working without the working elevator. This is the bus bay for Eisenhower Station. Thank you so much for taking a tour with the Brown Line with us. Hope to see you on the train soon. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. For videos of the One Train Corridor, Bergam Airport, the International Airport, the Blue Train, the Purple and Red Train Extensions, the green train extension and also the school system expansions that's been taking place please like and subscribe and click the bell so that you will be notified of any future videos thanks for watching